One time I was doing evangelism to someone, and I just had this idea: if I download some pictures online about the crucifixion, about Jesus, and then、uh, I can use it、uh, so that it will help the person to understand about Jesus. Uh, crucifixion, about heaven and hell and salvation, and so I did that. And then after that, I had this idea that we can use PDFs that we can download on into the phones. And、uh, now, first we have to use、uh, PowerPoints to make the PowerPoints, and then put in the PDF,、uh, make it turn it into PDF, and then download in the phone. And then we can、uh, send it to our Members, and then they can use it for evangelism. And this title here, this、uh, PDF, the title is "God Loves You Very Much and Wants to Bless You Greatly," as an evangelism tool. And you can see a P- QR code on the right hand side. And if you scan it with your cell phone, it will download to your s- cell phone, and then you can uh, uh, use it for evangelism. Okay, so this is a tool. That we can use now nowadays with the technology we have, so this is、uh, something useful. And so God loves you very much. We all need love, and you know God take care of us. You know we, even when we are sleeping, God is watching over His children. God wants to bless us, and everyone needs love, but it's hard to find real love, and many people feel unloved. Uh, I'm. We certainly we all have this experience. We want people to love us, to care about us, but very often、uh, it's hard to find someone who really loves us because people like to use other people, but they don't necessarily love other people. But God, the Creator, is full of love, and He loves everyone without condition. He He loves us by、uh, dying on the cross. Jesus died on the cross, and He can comfort us, and He accepts us when we repent. And he can heal, bring healing to us. And do you want to be loved? God's love is very real and can be experienced. And people's love often does not last, but God's love lasts forever. God's love lasts forever, and and Christians can experience God's love in every area of their lives. So we can experience God's love when we pray. We can experience God's love when we meditate on God's word. And when we think about the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, it's you know when、uh, the Holy Spirit guides us to repentance, guides us to love Him. This is all the work of the Holy Spirit showing His love to us. And also when we pray for people, especially when we lay hand on people, and people can experience the love of God, and we too can experience the love of God when we pray for people and see how people are touched by the love of God. Now first. God's creation and action show His love. That you know we can see His love from nature. How He created our body very wonderfully, and、uh, with the brain and every part of our body, and He created love of human and of animals. That they love the babies, and also even different animals can have good friendship with each other. When they grow up together, they can can have friendship,、uh, and also God created beautiful natures for us to enjoy. All this show God's love, and the food we eat shows God's love. Psalm thirty three five: The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. So God created all the delicious food because of love, and the food is also healthy. It's good for our health when we eat. Natural food instead of processed food. When people process the food, some ingredients are not healthy. And also, when p- food is processed,、uh, the some of the vitamins and uh, uh, nutrients are not preserved. So the best food is the natural food, and we eat eat the natural food is best for our health and is delicious also. And human being and animals have loved、uh, shows that God is full of love. That you know,、uh, God can create people with love, can create motherly love, fatherly love, and create animals that love each other and love us. So all this shows that God has love. Therefore,、uh, live,、uh, people and the animals He created has love. 
and the body. Psalm 139, 14, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. That we are wonderfully made, fearfully, because we look at the, uh, the body, we'll say, wow, this is wonderful, it's awesome. It causes us to honor God, to have awe toward God, to have fear toward God, because it's so wonderful. And scientists continue to find out how wonderful a body is. So we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and marvelous are your works. God's work is wonderful in our brain, our eye, our ear, every part, you know, that our, our eye, the inner, po inner part of the eye. Now, this shows the, the outside of the eye, but the inside of the eye is transparent, that light can go through. Now, our whole body is not transparent. How come the eye, the, you know, people said that our body came from evolution, but how come this part will have, will have a transparent part? If it's by accident, it can be anything. Why does it create, you know, why does it, you know, it's not creation. Evolution is just by accident that we happen to have this, uh, the eyeball inside is transparent so that light can go through and has a lens that can focus the light onto the back of the retina and have muscle that pull on the lens so that it can focus different distances. It has tear gland to lubricate our eye and also to kill germs. And then it has uh, nerve cells in the back that can read the light. And then have nerve cells that transmit this message to the brain. And, and it goes to four different parts of our brain. The right eye, the right side of the right eye and the left side of the right eye go to two different spots. And the left eye, the right side and the left side go to two different spots. So they go to four different spots in the brain, but the brain can combine all this image into one. So when we look at uh, the image we see in front of us, we don't see a seam. We don't see a line between the right and left eye. And, and also our eye can focus so quickly. All this shows that it's, it's creation of God is so wonderfully made. Uh, and uh, then also the message, all, the message of all the sense cells in the body are all transmitted by electricity. But in the brain, it can read the electricity message to be, you know, images, that it can recreate the image we see. And this is wonderful. And the ear is also very wonderful. So, you know, if you explain this to people, people can see that, wow, this is wonderful. And they can see the creation of God, that we have the outer ear, and then it has a, a tube that connect the outer ear to an eardrum. And then when there is vibration in the, in the air, then it will vibrate the, the eardrum. But the eardrum is very weak, but it's connected to three bones. It's probably hard for you to see, but you search online the ear structure that you can see the three bones. And the last one is like a hammer. It's like a hammer that will hit on this cochlea. It's a, a shell, like the, like the shell of a snail. Uh, and then it has tiny hair lined up. It has tiny hair lined up that, um, that is sensitive to different frequency of sound. So when we hear different sounds, it will uh, cause different hairs to vibrate and then it has many many nerve cells that transmit this electrical current to the brain and the brain can read that now this time they don't read it as image but they read it as sound and we can discern so many sounds that we can be listening to someone at the same time we can hear music we can hear the waves we can hear the breeze or the wind uh, we can see foot, hear footsteps. We can hear different things and we can discern all this. You know, people say, well, it's by evolution, but you look at it. If by evolution, but accidentally, the eye has an eyeball. Now, it doesn't mean there will be a lens that is developed right next to it. If the lens is not developed next to it, if the lens is developed in our mouth, in our nose, in our ear, it doesn't function. But it just happened to be in the eye and it's facing outward and it has 
muscles are tendons pulling it so that it can focus you know how does it happen automatically when we see things you know this tendons all are lined up in the right place and then it will pull and also this lens is at the right angle if it's not at the right angle it's slightly off then it's hard for us to see and it happened just happened there is eye the tear gland and also the nerve cell all happen to at the same uh, in the right place so if this comes by evolution you have to have one part of the body evolve uh, it could take you know thousands tens of thousands or millions of years and it doesn't function is it, it's not an eye yet. and then it takes thousands or tens of thousands of years to develop the lens but the lens is it's not in the right direction it doesn't do any good and without the retina in the back to to uh, to be sensitive to light it doesn't uh, it doesn't help the person to see so all this is non-functional until every single part is finished so they call this the irreducible complexity this complexity cannot be reduced and it still carry the function you cannot reduce the eye to a very simple structure and it still see and the ear too the ear that you just have the earlobe it doesn't help you to hear and you don't have the tube it doesn't help you to hear and you have the uh the um the ear f uh the membrane it doesn't help you to hear here and then you have the three bones just with the three bones it doesn't help you to hear and it has the cochlea and the cochlea is connected to the outside through this membrane and the three bones and then it happened to have all this little hair it's called cilia that is sensitive to the vibration of the sound and also the where the hammer the little bone hit the cochlea there's a little soft part this cochlea is hard but at this point where the hammer the little bone hit it is soft so it can go in and out it can and cause the liquid inside to vibrate cause the hair to vibrate and then also there's another hole because if you just have one one side that it can move then it, it doesn't move the liquid it has to have another membrane that is soft and then so when it's pushed in the other membrane is pushed out and then when this side is pushed out and then the other side is pushed in so it can cause this continual vibration cause this continual vibration that when you hit this um, vibration and then it caused the hair to vibrate all this has to be exact so it cannot reduce you cannot reduce the complexity and you know if you look at anything any man-made thing you look at a camera you say for sure this is made by someone it cannot come by accident but when we look at the human body and all the bodies of all the living things it there's so many parts that are so complicated it cannot come from evolution it has to come from creation and also many people said that you know the human came from the apes uh, that evolved and then uh, but let me tell you to to think about this uh, they will say you know, the apes become men the when the next question is where does where do the apes come from they say they came from the mouse now why the mouse because this that's the simplest uh, um, mammal but from the mouse to the ape there is no intermediate intermediate form it takes you know it could take millions of years for the mouse to evolve to become the ape but there is no intermediate form and the legs of the of the mouse is bending backward but for us it's bending forward you know our uh, knee is bending forward now how does this happen and actually many other animals the the whale, the dolphin, also came from the mouse. How does the mouse become a dolphin or a whale? There is no intermediate form. So when you look at all the creatures, they just appear, and even the very old fossils, they are exactly the same as the modern fossils, the modern uh, bones of these creatures. It shows that you know, things are not evolving, but they were created 
as they were. So this is a um, something I, I study and, uh, and I can use another illustration. You know, because I was a science student, it is helpful for you to do evangelism uh, doing this, uh, you, using this different illustration to show that there is a God who creates. Like the milk of mammals, you know, the milk would feed the baby. And the milk has a few important ingredients. It has carbohydrate, it has protein, it has fats, it has the um, um, vitamins, minerals, and it also has antibiotic that the mother would pass on to the baby so that the baby can fight the germs when they come out of the body. So the milk has, I said again, the protein, the fats, the um, protein, fats, and um, carbohydrate, and then the minerals, the vitamins, and then the antibiotic. Now, according to evolutionists, milk just came by accident. So the mother just happened to produce some juice. Now, but the juice can be tear, it can be any other kind of, it can be saliva. Tear and saliva doesn't feed the baby. But this happened to have everything the baby needs, including the baby whale, which is so large. It needs a lot of milk, a lot of vitamin and nutrients for the, for the baby whale to grow every day. It's, it's you know, uh, many, many pounds of growth every day. So how does it happen that it, it all came about accidentally that the mother whale would have this protein, carbohydrate, uh, fats, and uh, mineral, and uh, vitamin, and uh, antibiotic already perfect. All the animals have perfect milk. All the mammals have perfect milk. None of the mammals have milk that doesn't feed the baby. So all this it just came by accident. And also you look at the whole body. We all have um, different kinds of hormones. For instance, why does the mother have milk? When does the mother produce milk? The mother produces milk when the uh, when the child when the mother give birth gives birth to the baby on the day that the mother gives birth to the baby the milk start to come out now why does this happen because there is hormone that control the milk the hormone knows that when it receives the message that the baby has been born the hormone would tell the breast to produce milk this is also intricate, so wonderful, so well-timed. Now, if it's just by accident, the mother could be producing milk all the time. It's a waste of energy, waste of food. But it just happened when the baby is born. So it could not have come from evolution by accident that the milk just start to come out and at the time when the baby is born. And, uh, you know, there are many other parts uh, that the whole, uh, the living thing shows that it has to come from creation, not from evolution. Another example I want to use is um, the metamorphosis of insects. If you have heard of it, you know, like uh, the, there is a complete metamorphosis and, uh, and the simple metamorphosis. The simple metamorphosis is like the cockroaches that it has uh, produced a, uh, like a capsule. The mother produced like a capsule and it, inside there are eight baby, uh, the eight parts, uh, eight uh, little eggs that will become eight cockroaches. When they come out, they are already like the adult cockroaches. It, it just grow bigger and bigger. But in the metamorphosis, like the butterfly, 
first the butterfly mother will produce eggs on the leaves. Now, they know what leaves to lay eggs on. They lay, lay the eggs on the leaves, and then the uh, the eggs will hatch and become a larva, little worm. And the larva will eat the leaves and then grow bigger. And then one day it's it stop eating. It will wrap itself with silk. That it, the mouth will produce silk and wrap itself, wrap a uh, bigger shell around it, and it become a pupa. And inside the pupa, it go through uh, great changes. That this uh, butterfly, uh, the larva at first was just like a little worm, but it will restructure the worm inside to become the butterfly, to have the wings, to have a slimmer body, to have legs, and uh, so the whole body is different, totally different, and have sex organs. And the larva doesn't have sex organs. And then, on a day when it's mature, it will come out. When it come out, the process of coming out, it squeezes the blood, so the blood will go to the wings. And then the butterfly can fly. Now, if someone cut out, cut open the pupa, then the butterfly comes out, and the wing cannot be stretched, and then it will die. It cannot fly anymore. So it just, you know, it just happened according to evolutionists. It just happened that the way that it comes out will cause the blood to flow to the wings, and then it can fly, and then it can reproduce. Now the question is, according to evolution. The butterfly has to come by evolution by steps. It cannot come just suddenly, you know, one uh, butterfly just emerge or one egg emerge and then it will go through uh, transformation that metamorphosis means changes, transformation. So at first they don't have this four step. The egg, pupa, uh, egg, larva, pupa, and uh, adult. It will not have the four step. It, it will only have two steps. Uh, it will have the egg and it become the adult. But when does the larva start to change, start to make up its mind and say, I'm going to wrap myself in silk and I'm going to change. Now, even if it wraps itself, it doesn't necessarily change. Can you cause yourself to change? We cannot cause ourselves to change. You know, it wraps itself, it, it's going to die. But this lava wraps itself with silk, and inside it goes through great changes. Now, online you can search, and we'll show you how this process goes through, and how it changes from the lava, and then finally to the butterfly. So, it has to change. Now, the point is, this has to come in one generation, that there is a lava that starts to wrap itself with silk, but if it doesn't change and become a butterfly, it will die. The, 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 the pupa will die because it's not going to accomplish anything. So it has to finish this evolution process in one time. That means it decides to wrap itself now. First, why does it wrap itself? You know, if it can reproduce already, if at first it's the egg will become the larva, larva can reproduce, then they don't have to wrap itself. But actually the larva doesn't have reproductive organ, so it cannot reproduce. So suppose they had reproductive organ, and then suddenly one larva said, oh, I'm going to wrap myself up. Now when it wraps itself up, it doesn't mean the inside will change. And if it changes, it doesn't change to a butterfly. How can it change to a butterfly? You know, like if we wrap ourselves up, we won't change to be a bird and have wings. We cannot change ourselves. But this change has to happen in one generation because if it, if it fails, it will die. It cannot go to the next generation. So there must be one lava. If there's evolution is true, that it has to go through the change in one generation and then it succeeds. But how can you imagine that, that this lava wrap itself uh, with silk, and then it can change to become a perfect butterfly with reproductive organs. So all this shows that 
the creatures came from creation, not from evolution. Now, some people say, well, even if evolution is wrong, how do you know creation is, is the right answer? The point is, how can I prove that living thing either came from evolution or creation? The point is, because all living things are very similar. We, are all, we all have the DNA, the genes inside us. They have the same code. There are four, uh, the genes, there are four parts called ATGC. They just line up in different order. And for each living thing, each animal, each plant, each fungus, each bacteria, each virus, the code is the same. The code is the same. So all living thing has one code. And if they all have one code, it has to come from one source either by evolution. So if they don't come from evolution, it has to come from a designer who designed the one pattern, one way of uh, that our genes will operate to, um, to produce the living things. Now there is a scientist called James Tour, J-A-M-E-S, James Tour, T-O-U-R, T-O-U-R. He is a organic chemist. He has studied the structure of living things to show that living thing could not have come from accidental uh, evolution, from accidents. He break down all these parts and it showed that it's impossible. And he challenged all these scientists who said that it came from evolution, the first cell. He challenged them, see if they can do this in a lab, provided, even provided that they will have this needed, needed chemicals put together, can they produce the parts? And he challenged them to respond to him and nobody could respond to him. So you can look for his video, James Tour, and there are many other scientists who are Christians to show from the structure of living thing to show that there is a creator, that, that that all the living things don't come from accident, but came from a creator. So that shows that there is a God. If there is a God in heaven and hell, do you care about yourself? Do you want to live eternally? And so the next point I have now. Now what I just explained about evolution and creation, if you don't, don't cannot understand that fully, uh, that's fine. But if you can understand even a little bit, if you can explain a little bit. Now you can watch this again and again on Facebook. You can watch this again and again, and then you can learn it, and then you can um, uh, use it for evangelism, and you can download this PDF into your cell phone. So uh, if, even if you cannot learn it right away, right away, you can learn it step by step. And the second point is God is very real. His love, comfort, and joy can be experienced. Now this is one woman I prayed for when I went to the mission field, and at first she was crying, she was crying, crying. She, she saw, she experienced the love of heaven. And then she was filled with joy. And then on the right hand side, there was a woman I prayed for and all her sadness came out and she cried a lot. So, so uh, God can be experienced. And when the evangelist uh, Carlos and Akondia lay hand on me, I experienced a great love flowing into me. It was so powerful. I really appreciate God. I really love God. And I, I said, it's so wonderful that I can experience God like that. And I want to continue to experience God. So I spent much time praying. And also all the time, I love God. I pray to Him all the time. I love Him all the time. And I found that when I love Him all the time, the love of God, the joy of the Lord will come to me every time I pray. Now, every time I pray, I can experience His joy. Hallelujah. And the joy will flow out. So, God is very real. We can experience Him. And also, He can comfort us and He can give us good sleep for He grants sleep to those He loves. So when we love Him, He loves us. You know, actually, He first loves us. And then when we love Him, He will give us things uh, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So when we love Him, we respond to His love, then we experience His love more. He loves everyone, no matter what. 
and then I will lie down in peace and sleep because of God. Now the second point is, scientists found that our souls continue to exist after death and there are proofs of heaven and hell. So there are scientists who found that after we die, we don't disappear. We still continue to have consciousness. So you care about a house on earth. Do you care about your eternal home? So if your house leaks water, do you care? Mm -hmm.